I wanted to start off kind of with this, that in the show you said that you were obviously bringing Zen's physics with you to Pinball FX using the Unreal Engine. And I was just kind of curious to know, how is, is that a kind of a plug and play kind of situation? How does that integrate with the with going to an entirely new graphics engine? Does that cause complications? It is most definitely not plug and play. It is most definitely complicated. <laughs> um, UE has its own form of physics, you know, and uh, so we ripped it out. And we're putting our own in. And I, I can't say much more than that because it's, you know, there, there's some confidentiality there, but um, I will say like our physics are the most advanced, right? And uh, we, we need to keep our physics and it's very, you know, I don't know, it, it, they're, they're very special. So when we're talking about changing in an engine, it's it's definitely heavy, heavy lifting. I mean, we're talking about like gravity and collision control and friction and rigid body dynamics, like all these different things that go into our physics simulation. It just has to be customized and it's heavy lifting. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's basically if you're customizing a car, you're ripping out the suspension uh, that was came with it and putting in your own like you uh, uh, the way you liked it. Yeah. That's pretty full on stuff. And I imagine there's probably other things that um, are a bit different between like Unreal and the old PX engine as well. I know that one of the, the, the community seems to be really excited about the concept of HDR, um, a high dynamic range in um, games. And I'm just wondering um, how that fits into pinball effects um, uh, as far as like graphical presentation goes. I'd say even things like ray tracing too. I mean, if that can be mm. spoken upon. Yeah, we haven't specifically said ray tracing yet. I, maybe we did. I don't know. These are things that we're working on, and mm -hmm. we want you know that's the power that Unreal Engine gives us. And we looked at the change from PX to Unreal. Um, obviously, to you know, kind of reiterate. Look, we don't have to maintain an engine anymore. We let Unreal do that. That's what they do, and we can make games. But the physics were very specific to us. We have to bring that with us, and then the updated graphical horsepower. That is something that is provided to us, and we don't necessarily have to to do anything other than like we need to work on a lot of the assets, all the games that are getting remastered, like it's complete re rework of, of assets, but then they end up looking beautiful. The HDR, the, the graphical fidelity, ray tracing, you know, the way a, the, the ball can potentially look and the way that we can do lighting and the dynamics. I think that the night and day difference um, of the uh, World West Rampage uh, screenshot for the, the night mode, I mean, like, come on, that looks awesome. Uh, I mean, or maybe I'm just saying it. I hope you all like <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, these are the things in, you know, we're still like every table is going to get its own kind of upgrade. It's not just like that's how night mode or dark mode will look in any other game that has dark colors associated with it. It's, it really gives us freedom on, on the graphical side. I mean, cause I'm kind of guessing that one of the pluses with uh, going and using a, a third party's graphics engine is that when tech moves forward, they're obviously going to be keeping up with it. Like, uh, again, just thinking about with HDR, ray tracing, uh, you know, doing 4K uh, gaming and stuff like that, that kind of takes it off your plate and puts it all on theirs, right? Absolutely. 4K, HDR, that's like the minimum spec that we can ship with, which will be awesome. And then from there, you know, it's up to how much work and energy we put into it. Ray tracing just doesn't happen at the push of a button either. I mean, that's all custom work. Right. Um, and then, you know, the, who knows what the future holds like, People already have 8K sets, but there's no 8K content. But you know, we know that the current devices are capable of pushing that. So uh, eventually, and in time, I mean, we'll, we'll see where we get to. So I'm kind of curious. With uh, obviously, if you're not having employees focusing on the engine now, that frees up employees. But then I know that also in the comments uh, there was mentioned by I can't remember if it was you or Akosh that basically said that you guys have also been hiring more people for the pinball division. I'm wondering if you can kind of expand upon that. Kind of, what does that benefit? Uh, I mean, we kind of suspect what the benefits are, but maybe you can uh, detail what the benefits of that would be for Zen. Yeah. We're getting so many CVs in right now from people who want to come work at Zen. I'm personally flattered. I think that that kind of says a lot about your company when people are, you know, aching to, to come work with you. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hiring specifically right now for pinball. Um, and our goal is to 2X our pinball output <laughs> uh, within the next 12 months. So, uh, that means we're going to try to get to 20 tables per year um, as a baseline. Oh, wow. Uh, of course, we have platform wow. development and we have table development. Okay. So, and when I say tables, that doesn't just mean like the Williams where we're, those are kind of like 
uh, you know, ports or we're already working with existing. I mean, I'm talking about from the ground, from scratch, 20 games per year um, is our goal for content. On the platform side, we really don't like to have to keep building platforms. <laughs> like it's, it's a pain. Uh, I don't want to release a new pinball FX every three years um, because what we have to do with business, what we have to do with content and then push it all through on a brand new platform. I mean, it is a headache. So I really, mm. so the guys that we're bringing in right now, yes, of course we're um, you know, we get them started in content. That's where they're going to start with tables. And then we take our more senior guys and we put them into, uh, into the platform team. But what the hiring means is that platforms should be bigger, more robust, better maintained live services should be more compelling and then the content can flow and we can crank out awesome tables to fill the, the platform with. And uh, so that's, you know, that's what the hiring means. And I think so far this year, we've, we brought on 20 people and um, you know, this is a result of that embracer thing. Everyone's like, Oh, it means that Zen's not going to make pinball anymore. Well, quite the opposite. I can assure you we're, <laughs> we're making uh, more pinball than we've ever made before. Um, the, you mentioned the, the comparison shot, uh, with Wild Rush Rampage, um, and there it was listed as Unreal Four, and I know that I don't know. I'm sure you were blown away by it too, but we would watched the Unreal demo for Unreal Five, um, and what it meant for lighting, what it meant for textures, and everything like that. And I'm just curious: Are you guys developing for sure in Unreal Four? And if you were to want to switch to Unreal Five, is that something that would be then relatively painless since you were already in the ecosystem then? Yeah, look, we're developing in 4.25. It's the same thing that Fortnite is, you know, built in and currently maintained. Uh, five is coming out later this year. Um, of course, we can move to five at any at any time. But under the guidance of Epic and under, you know, what's available to us right now, yeah, everything's in 4.25. Um. <laughs> All right, let's move into, this is the, uh, we, we kind of saved this for a little while into this, folks, because we didn't want to, uh, uh, we want people to actually listen and not just <laughs> turn off their ears. So, Mel, what table did you want to announce today? Oh, wait. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try and fool it. No, uh, obviously the response with regards to both table purchases not going forward into pinball effects and on P the PC side going Epic exclusive. We had, I mean, I guess we were naive to this. We had no idea. There are some very strong opinions about the Epic Game Store. Um, mm. We understand the business angle of why, if you're doing complete remasters, the man hours that goes into it, you can't just give that away for free. Um, you know, why that is, but obviously the reaction, you saw it, we, we, felt it i put a little bit of unfortunately mm. on jeff it <laughs> this week in pinball in an article i wrote um how did you guys did you know did you expect this kind of reaction how do you, do you how do you address it yeah um this is what we expected um you know i don't want to minimalize it but it no. wasn't as bad as what i thought it was going to be to be honest with you we have a right. lot of support and a lot of people who don't like to chatter online and become a part of a toxic community or just throw their hat in message me privately or through other means. And, you know, they, under, they, they say, Hey, we get it. Um, you know, it's not my favorite thing, but we still support you. And thank you for being honest about it. So, um, mm -hmm. I thought that we would actually have more negativity. I thought it would be terrible to be honest with you. I was dreading it. Um, we all were dreading it. You do things as a company because you've got people that depend on you to make decisions. And sometimes we just evaluate it and we just say, this is the right thing to do for our company for the next 10, whatever years, you know, this decision was made pre-acquisition. Um, this decision was made because we were a different type of company and would we make it again? I mean, I, I don't know. I can't second guess it, hmm. but the reaction that we got, you know, and I know that people just like, I don't understand. I personally don't understand it. Um, you can play a game wherever you want. Um, on PC, you know, I, I, there's myths about Epic being Chinese uh, spyware or whatever. But like those guys, you know, <laughs> they they give away a lot of games. They they have awesome uh, storefront. I mean, there's no reason why we can't launch a game there. They support us unbelievably well. Um, this was a decision, a conscious decision, and the way that we wanted to tell everybody was a very conscious decision. And uh, we knew it would be difficult. We knew that it would be challenging. We tried to do it in a way that was honest, upfront, providing ample time to digest it. 
So hopefully over time, you guys, you know, the community will understand and maybe look back on it. And hopefully the people who aren't with us right now or say that, that we're the most evil company in the world will maybe come around and we can win you back. Because I'm assuming that you guys kind of tested the waters with the Epic Game Store with Operantia and Dreadnoughtical and uh, Castle Storm too. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we've we've launched all three of those there, uh, you know, exclusively. And um, you know, we've we've been close with Epic. Like we've had friends there for many many years. Um, we we actually worked in Unreal Technology way back when we did a Punisher first person arena based shooter back in like 2009 or 10, you know, that was on an unreal tech and we've maintained <laughs> the relationship. Know about that one. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> the archives of Zen history. Um, of course, what am I pinging? Punisher pinball. Um, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, um, another thing I wanted to kind of clarify because I, I know that I wound up seeing it in a forum, but I wanted to get it out there verbally coming out. We were, kind of theorizing, okay, wait a second, with the one-year exclusivity within Epic, does that mean also any table that's released within that time period, you know, from the point it releases, does it now have a one-year DLC exclusivity on there? Or is it the case where after that one year expires that any table that had been put out during that time would also uh, be available at that point too? That's correct. It's the latter of what you just said. Okay. Once the game is released, that begins our period Everyone's fully aware that we are constantly launching tables into a pinball, said pinball platform. And at the end of that term, um, all content in said pinball platform can can go wide. With the uh, console platforms, is there going, because I know that some games uh, require this, is it going to be an epic login on the consoles? Or is that a completely separate beast? No, 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 that, that's completely separate. Okay. That, there, there's not an epic login for anything on pinball effects. Okay. Um, and then the last thing I kind of was wondering about, and we were kind of thinking, you know, in terms of goodwill, uh, hopefully the answer is yes, but, um, with, uh, the Williams tables that are out right now, uh, mm -hmm. obviously volumes one through three had the different physics than what then got implemented in volume four. Those physics have made their way into the arcade one-up cab. So we know that it's been done within the PX engine, uh, are those going to get sunsetted in in a patch for FX3 with the Williams tables? Yeah, we want to take care of those tables. We want to get them the Williams physics. Can't give you a date when it's happening, but that, that'll happen. It will happen. Okay. Yep. So on timelines and impatient um, <laughs> gamers. So, you know, we know that pin, Pinball FX is coming out sometime at the end of the year. No real release date yet, but you know that's a long time to wait for new content. Is there going to be stuff coming out between Star Wars Pinball VR and Pinball FX coming out later in the year that people can enjoy from Zen from the pinball space? Yeah, there will be. Um, awesome. We, like I, I said, you know, I think it, I don't know. It must have been the first episode of the Pinball Show. We got some. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff coming. There's going to be some surprises uh, coming um, that I think everyone will just be like, where did this come from? Uh, we're just going to drop it on you. So mm -hmm. there will be more to hold you all over uh, between now and, and when Pinball FX launches. And that's I think why you tune into the Pinball Show, because I'm sure that's where it'll get announced. <laughs> mm. <laughs> There'll be news. Stay, stay tuned. Um, there's one other uh, thing on there. Now, we did talk earlier in the show about, you know, the sort of cadence and you know, how many tables you'd like to get out um, once, you know, you get spun up with uh, new staff and that sort of thing. But from the perspective of, of Pinball FX, how many titles, new titles, given that there is going to be stuff coming out this year now, and you've revealed that, how many new titles do you think we're going to see maybe before the end of 2021 before the end of the year. Okay. So before the end of the year, so we've already announced classic collectibles and Mandalorian, yep. right? Mm -hmm. That's yep. two. So I'm going to count on my fingers here. Mm -hmm. I can't say that the names, otherwise I'm no, screwed. Right. You'll, you'll, you'll be in trouble, trouble over again. You, you, you said some <laughs> originals. We're going to be on the way. Okay. So this year there should be nine news and tables coming. Nine. That's a lot. And that, is that a combination of originals and licensed? Wait, like when I say licensed, like William. 11. That's a combination of, of Zen originals and like Williams 
tables? It, that's right. Um, yes, 11. 11. Between, sometime between now and the end of 2021, which the prior year, I think, what was the most that you guys had put out? Uh, it was like th three? Six, no, like 16 tables total, but it was like four different packs or something like that. Mm. That's, I mean, considering nothing has been released so far, that's pretty good clip for what's going to be. Yeah, at the end eleven. Of the year. <laughs> Eleven's a lot. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: right? when we were in, aside from the from WMS six, we had a pretty good clip yes. on Williams games, and, and they're not full. You know, we're not starting from ground zero. Mm. I'm talking this year, guys. There's going to be eleven from ground zero games shipped. Oh, right. Brand new Zen exclusive, like original licenses. Yeah. Well, and you've got Star Wars Pinball VR coming. You've got Pinball FX coming. And there's going to be 11 brand new from the ground up Zen tables coming. Okay. Okay. That's definitely something Good to look news. forward to. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things that you talked about was, uh, obviously, people have a whole bunch of features that they want put into Pinball FX. But there's that feature creep where, yeah, if you just keep on putting them in, it's just going to keep on pushing it back. Uh, but for people like me that run cabinet mode, one of those things that we are very curious about, and it's always bugged me to the point that then I had to go make my own back glass. Um, <laughs> but what got revealed with the Williams collection with the flick of a button, hey, look, there was the back glass, and it was animated. Can we expect Zen to do back glasses that are built in for cabinet mode that maybe are even animated back glasses? Because obviously the Williams ones... Uh, certain tables, like if you were to do a lot of the system 11s, have a lot of windows on the back glass that are important information. Yeah. yeah. It's a very obvious feature that we're missing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. Um, and yeah, that is that makes a ton of sense to include that. Uh, we're, so when we look at, well, okay, here's cap support as it stands. What is the next thing to do? That is the next thing to do. So um, right. that will that will be there. I think we have actually a really, really great solution, um, which I think will be ultimately enhancing uh, that what we can do there. It won't just be like a graphic. I think we're going to have something. Really well, I was going to say, I imagine your licensors would probably be thrilled too to have a little, you know, rather than people pulling random images from the internet to create their own backlash, to have an official backlash that your licensors are like, yes, that sells it for us. See, you have to understand this, this This DIY effort now has been going on a lot longer than licensors have been open to the idea of what this is. It's taken a while for them to understand mm -hmm. it. It's not yeah. for them to understand, oh, we can make money. Oh, this is a very, like, how does this work for us? So, like, while we all have been here knowing that cab support is like a duh thing for pinball, like, of course you do that. It takes, you know, with, with biz, big business, it just takes time for them to digest it and to know and to accept new kind of products to support it. So there's always a lead time there. Um, a DIY community is always ahead of the curve in terms of how you can make that into a true business. Mm 